Would you be so kind to explain your build order step by step? Just take out your notepad, bro, and write it down. Write this down. First peon. Altar. Four in lumber. Next peon. I mean, first peon, altar, four in gold. Next peon, in gold. Take one off when it's 75%. Build a burrow. Take both lumber peons and put them on lumber. Great hall, control four. Altar, control five. It allows you to spam your APM, which people think is about raising your APM. It's not. It's about warming up and getting comfortable with your control groups. The new peon builds a barracks. At this point, you will still have four peons in gold. Next peon, gold. We need more gold. Ready to work. Next peon in lumber. Now it's traditional to scout with your altar peon. However, I will not recommend that for nublets because you will not even know what to look at. You're so busy with your build. So let's just uh, put it on lumber like I said. Hero, altar finishes. Immediately start your hero. If you can't because your burrow isn't done, you failed step two. On lumber until 16 out of 20. At 16 out of 20, you start looking for enough lumber to build a burrow. Which you will when your first two peons return lumber. You'll build another burrow on the other side of your great hall, so you can defend from both sides. At this point, your barracks is on control 3. 1 and 2 will be your army. Make sure to spam so you know which control group controls which building. You can even use two hands and a bit of jerky movement to really go crazy. You'll stay at 19 out of 20 after making your first grunt. At this point, you'll start your voodoo lounge. And you will fill up your supply to 20 out of 20 with your final peon. This will be peon number 7. Now I like to take all my peons and use shift 0 to all add them to the same group. 0. You will have 6 in that group. You start creeping immediately. And once your final peon finishes, you shift 0, add him to the group as well. You will finish your first camp. And then yes, you will go back to your voodoo lounge to heal up. At this point, Absolutely. you start playing the game. Yes, if he harasses you with Demon Hunter, you will attempt oh, evasive maneuvers. Try to walk away while zigzagging. Oh, if this doesn't work, I call him names. If that doesn't work, wind walk and hide oh, in the shadows. Once you have 190 lumber and 315 yes, gold, you will take to I tier 2. Sell Town Portal, you will never need it, you have Windwalk. You also need the gold to be able to afford double healing solve, so you don't need to stay in your base overly long. Go onto the map, and when you see him, right click on his hero until all your units are dead, and he jukes you like crazy. Or, play it like I do, and react to the information that you see. Start another creep camp without scouting what he's doing. After all, what's the worst thing that could happen? Besides what happened last game. Finish the camp, heal your grunts, and go back to defend your peons. After all, they work so hard for you. Rotate peons that get hurt yes. in the burrow and put a peon so that he can't yes, leave your base For the burning blade. Oh, make sure oh, that when you restore you order in your base you yes, make a new group of lumber peons as the previous ones will now have been rotated along with your gold mine peons so you need to regroup zero which i did otherwise later when you give a command to all your lumber peons to go into the burrows it will be some gold peons and it's much more okay to break off lumber mining than it is to break off gold mining we are making use of the fact that the town portal, which we were able to force with a single point opening to creep something big, which gives us level 3. We're gonna sell HP items. As I already said, we can't die because we have Blademaster. And he's an expert at not dying. We will bait him to stay here, which will result in his untimely demise. 
Or close to it. We we'll use clarity in unique situations. And we will check the middle of the map. Keeping grunts in the one plug opening. Checking in the direct route to his base. What he's going to do. We saw there's an archer that hired that beastmaster, but we currently don't have anything to reveal him. So we will first attack. Okay, sure. We will first attack the bl the beastmaster to make use of our bonus windwalk damage, and we'll then use sentry ward to kill the archer. Once you get to tier two, you want to make sure to start your second hero as fast as possible. When it's between your tech and your second hero, in an ideal scenario, you will always start your second hero first and then your tech. Why not the other way around? If you start your tech first and then your second hero, it will take a very long time until you can start creeping your second hero, which is fairly important. We're going to go Tauren Chieftain against double hero archer opening, and we're going to go Shadow Hunter when we see any number of Huntresses. Even if they fooled us and they go Huntress into Talent, which is unintuitive because it delays their Talent tech, even then it's still okay. We will transition into Demolishers at a later stage, but we need the Shadow Hunter to stop Huntress harass. Against a single Archer though, Tauren Chieftain is going to be more effective. Generally, one Archer means that they're going to go for Druids of the Talon, and we need Shockwave and Endurance against that. Now I'm going to resume the game and build my Beastry, as I have 140 plus Lumber. The single advantage of making your uh, tech before your second hero is that it makes your tech less cancelable. Since they started earlier, if he starts harassing it, it won't be as easy to cancel. We will try a fancy surround and fail miserably. Second chance. Oops, what was that? We actually want Warstomp to try and get a hero kill. We were able to do this, but we, we fracked up our micro. This is an unusual choice that will probably lead to defeat. We could have done it, but we messed up Micro. If we killed the Demon Hunter with it, it will be pretty fine. Now, you're going to make a Raider and then a Snare. Why not the other way around? Well, you only do that when you have a lack of resources. The advantage of Raider into a Snare... What the f... That was like million bash in a row! I had stomp to save my Blade Master! Anyway, uh, composure, composure. Uh, the advantage of Raider into Ensnare is that you finish your Ensnare when you're somewhere on the map. So you can use it immediately. Skill stone action here. Make sure to queue up your upgrades, yes, you don't want to be any late with that. Oh. Check your ensnare yes, timing. I, I I and don't let him creep, importantly. Once you have enough lumber and you've yes, already made all your tech, it is okay to finally start Excellent. your berserker strength. Then, you want to creep things around his base to make him more starved for valuable creep camps. While at the same time keeping tabs on the goblin shop. We've built double sentry ward next to some of his creep camps. Which uh, warns us when he wants to use his Ancient of War. We have a million sentry wards. Because we know when he wants to use his Ancient of War, we also 
You can limit his creeping there easily. We checked his talents, showing that he doesn't have Master's upgrade yet. As a result, we will play aggressively with everything we got. I stand I am your something. We need more gold. Make sure to keep producing. What yes. Yes. He still doesn't have masters. We will actually ensnare this so he's locked yes. in. Actually, I meant to ensnare that talent. And now we did. So now because of the factory and the talent, he can't escape. Yes. Does he have masters upgrade? He has, he has triple Ancient of Wind. What the hell is this? This is highly unusual. We're now going to go over 50 food, or at least prepare for it. I think we cancel this Cyclone. It just shows the importance of not ever making your Cyclone upgrade in the nearest Ancient of Wind. Yes, we did. We have brought our peons to group together with Spirit Link. It will now take him a very long time to upgrade Cyclone upgrade. We keep up the pressure and we do that by staying at 50 for a little bit and then going over quite fast. We have sentry wards everywhere, gives us a lot of map control. We put another healing scroll on the blade master. And we send one peon home, recognizing that we are out of lumber. And we have more sentry wards, just in case you needed any kind of map control. He is now creeping without town portal. We can either creep jack him or we can go kill his agent of wonders. Note that he's out of everything. We're gonna now go oversupply, even making an extra grunt, which is unusual. But at this point, anything helps. He's desperate. When you micro, try to sa uh, ensnare the demon hunter away from your army repeatedly. Besides ensnaring talents to lock them down. By doing so, you can make the Demon Hunter not attack anything for a while. This is pretty effective because he is their main DPS. There's many different ways to micro and this is one of them. You use Invul on Blade not because he's about to die, but because you want to maximize the damage that he does. Again, this is one of the many ways that you can micro. You can generally focus heroes or talents. You generally don't do both too much, except to spread damage so that you can suddenly pounce on their hero when they least expect it. General micro involves the following. Ensnare Demon Hunter in an isolated place so that he 1. cannot mana burn your TC and 2. cannot d DPS your units. Remove all your units from around the Demon Hunter and ensnare him again to reduce his DPS by a lot. Also, prioritize killing the factory as it makes clockwork goblins that do a lot of damage to your units and draw a lot of fire. Finally, make sure everything is linked as well as wrap your raiders around to start focusing talents, ensnaring them and trying to take them down. Finally, make sure that you uh, keep putting some damage on his heroes just so that they drop to half-life. There has never been a fight or game won against talents, almost, where you only focus units and don't even touch their heroes. You need to kind of make them afraid. So you spread a bit of damage on them, making sure that the best damage type, your raiders, is attacking their talents. And then suddenly you can mercilessly focus one of the heroes. Sometimes to kill them, sometimes just to get them staffed. Sometimes just to make them use their invulnerability already, so that later in the fight they don't have it. Thank you very much for resubbing Silent Death. This is the first time ever I've explained almost everything I did. Because uh, I thought that stuff like build order is a bit too simple, but now we did. Yes, I'll put it on YouTube, for sure. Did you ever fight a player named Philbot? Yes, 
Philbot was an undead player that played Kripfian's mass upgrades up to 3-3 and also made loads of expansions, each with a necropolis and four spirit towers. I'm glad you guys like that, thank you. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it too, the original Oscar for it, Panda Burnt. So normally you actually make Endurance Aura first and then Shockwave, not not War Stomp. It was a situational pick which you generally shouldn't try. I could have made it work if I rotated the Hurt Grunt fast enough with the Healthy Grunt. It's just that uh, it's resources you often don't have, Lyoko. And, uh, and generally when you attack Night Elf base, you don't get to pillage the entire base. You will attack a Moonwell and halfway through it he portals in. So even though pillage seems attractive, it takes a long time to earn back 75-25. Generally pillage is only worth it if you both accept that you're trading bases. He will kill 4 burrows, you will kill 4 moonwells and an Ancient of Wind. Then you both portal or run out. Then pillage is, is not just useful, but necessary. Oh. This is crazy! Yes, I am yours. Scroll of the Beast. He yes, has no coils anymore. Yes, I am yours. What you want? What task is there? Yes. Huh? Lol. Oh. One more fiend and I'm out. I am yours. Wait, he has coil soon. Yes, what you want? What Scroll of the Beast, so much value. Huh? Now uh, maybe we can get a level 3 from this, in which case the fun would go on. I like that quick scroll. 